Hi everyone, and welcome to this talk today on FAIR for Research Software. I'm Michelle Barker, the Director of the Research Software Alliance, and it's fantastic to have this opportunity to be with you here today at CW21. There's a link at the bottom of this page to my slides, which should also be pasted into the chat. I'm gonna to start today with a story, a fairy tale, in fact. We all know the story of Snow White who wanted to grow up to be the fairest of them all. Given that today we're talking about fair for research software, I'd like to introduce you to Snowware, a piece of software who wanted to grow up to be the fairest software of them all. To help understand Snowware's ambitions today, I'll be talking you through the concept of fair research software and how it came about, work being done to define it that you can all get involved with, and finally, I'll be asking the question, is being the fairest of them all, all there is in life? Is that enough to enable Swignowear uh, to leave a, lead a very happy and uh, fulfilling existence? To give some context to the problem that we're trying to solve today, my organisation has a vision that research software become recognised and valued as a fundamental and vital component of research software worldwide. And I'm sure that's an ambition shared by many of your organisations or yourselves as individuals. To nuance the problem that we're trying to address, here are some other pieces of research that have been done to show challenges to recognition of software from various angles. First, this year, OECD updated a recommendation on access to research data that they developed in 2006 on research data, uh, but it wasn't until this year that it was broadened to include algorithms, workflows, models, and software. The second example shows how low uh, the proportion of software that's cited can be. And the third example talks about reproducibility, that less than 50% of papers in computer system research uh, that contain code that were dependent on code uh, could be reproduced. And finally, on the right, a cartoon that uh, some of you may have seen late last year uh, that very succinctly shows the problem in funding uh, available for software as an illustration of the lack of recognition of its importance. So we're here today to talk about FAIR for research software, but what is the concept of FAIR? Many of, you, many of you will be familiar that, uh, with the paper that was published called Fair Guiding Principles by Wilkinson and Co. in 2016, uh, which provides high level guidelines on how to make research objects findable, accessible, interoperable and reusable. This has been extensively applied to data, but we're at a stage where this obviously needs to be applied equally to a whole range of research objects in our case, software. And whilst the guiding principles were in theory written to be applied to any research object uh, and apply very well to data, they're not fitting quite so well with software because software is not just data. It has some different characteristics uh, such as issues to do with executability and versioning. Work on applying the FAIR principles to software or nuancing them to, to achieve that outcome uh, began in 2017. This is some of the work that was done 2017 to 20, and you can look at uh, the links there to get more information on any of those. To build on this work in 2020, a group of individuals ran a birds of a feather session at a research data alliance plenary in April last year and decided to convene a working group across the Research Data Alliance, the Research Software Alliance and Force 11 uh, to definitively apply the FAIR principles to research software and to get uh, community endorsement for this work. The community is now on track uh, in drafting versions of uh, the FAIR for research software principles and they should be finalised by the middle of this year for dissemination. Uh, there's certainly opportunities to get involved in the development uh, between now and then. And then from August onwards, there will be more work that people can get involved with uh, to do with creating adoption guidelines. And the Research Software Alliance would like to thank some of our supporters for this work, uh, the Wellcome Trust and the Sloan Foundation. 
to give you just a small taste of, of what the FAIR principles look like and some of the issues in applying them to research software. In the left column, we have the original FAIR data principles uh, and the second column shows how they may be applied to software and the third column highlights the changes that are necessary. So for example, if we look at the third row, F1, uh, the original uh, principles are around that metadata need to be assigned a globally unique and persistent identifier. If we look in the second column, we can see in this example, all we need to do is replace data with software to make it applicable to research software. However, when considering some of the other FAIR principles, it's not quite so easy. There are principles that need to be extended uh, or rewritten, and there are probably some new principles that need to be developed to do with software. This work on applying the FAIR principles to software is also bringing up some very general issues. How do we balance between development of principles that are very general and those that provide very actionable instructions? And is a digital research object only fully FAIR if the object it builds upon are also FAIR? So if you'd like to uh, be involved in answering these kinds of questions and the detailed discussions that are happening around the previous slide, you can join the FAIR for RS Working Group at the link there. When we have the FAIR for Research Software Principles uh, agreed and disseminated in the middle of the year, it's only the start of our journey. RISA is leading another piece of work called the FAIR for RS Roadmap, which outlines how to make research software, uh, FAIR research software, a reality. And to exemplify the problem, this is some work done in 2018 by the European Commission on how to turn FAIR into reality uh, with a primary focus on data, but a broader uh, interest as well, and which identified a whole range of areas where work on FAIR is needed. And it's reasonable to assume that we probably need to do a similar amount of work in a similar range of areas uh, to do with FAIR software. So for example, once we have the FAIR for Research Software principles, we will then need to develop FAIR software indicators or metrics and maturity models and certif certification to go with them. Similarly, we may need FAIR software curriculums and thinking around career profiles and reward structures. And we need to think about how to certify FAIR services uh, and issues around interoperability frameworks uh, and FAIR software metadata. The FAIR for RS roadmap aims to outline how to make FAIR research software a reality uh, by mapping a range of projects in areas such as metrics or FAIR curriculum or FAIR services certification into a framework to guide investments, uh, to identify potential collaborators and the resourcing needed, and to identify how some of this work could integrate with some of the FAIR data initiatives that are around. So for example, a FAIR for research software metrics working group formed last month. So what might success look like? We can sum it up quite succinctly in the off-use motto of the Software Sustainability Institute. Of better software means better research. Perhaps another way we could measure it is by looking at the size of the smiles on the faces of people like this who were attending a session at CW20 this time last year. Perhaps this work will enable them to find better outcomes for their software. Perhaps success could be measured by looking at this kind of graphic from the OECD. Called the Our Data Index, it measures the openness, usefulness and reusability of data, this example from 2019. In what year will there be a software equivalent uh, to look at the openness of software, particularly in the research sector? My last question today is, is fair enough? When Snowware, our software, has grown up and achieved this green badge of fairness, uh, one of the types of things that currently exist and will continue to grow, this is an example from the How Fair Is initiative uh, that are talking later today in one of the later sessions. Uh, when Snowware has achieved this kind of uh, heights of fairness, or perhaps much greater as fair metrics for software continue to evolve, Will that be enough for Snowware to lead a happy and fulfilling life? Or more broadly, will it be enough for research software and the research software community? 
I suspect that many in this audience would already know what I'm going to say, that of course fairness is not enough. It's a fantastic step forward uh, to help gaining recognition to increasing sustainability and efficiency and reproducibility, but it's only one element of what's needed. Uh, most noticeably, it doesn't recognize the role of the creator of software. Uh, we have statistics such as this one here, but on average, only 50% of research software en engineers are acknowledged in relevant publications. And of course, we see work being done to improve elements like this that will work in concert with FAIR initiatives uh, by the Society of Research Software Engineering, by their national, by other national associations, now come together in the International Council of RSE Associations and organizations such as the Academic Data Science Alliance. To achieve fairness, we need a whole range of changes at different levels. This work from Brian Nozick uh, emphasizes that we need in the third uh, central funnel layer, uh, part of the funnel that we need norms, that communities to define and communicate what is good scientific practice. And if you like, this is the central focus of the FAIR for Research Software Working Group to develop the principles uh, of FAIR research software. However, the other items of this graphic uh, below and above, of course, are equally necessary. The mission of the Research Software Alliance is to bring research software organizations together to help respond to some of the challenges that we face as a community. RISA works across three focus areas in people, policy and infrastructure. And part of our goals for 2021 are to identify the gaps in those areas uh, where we can add value by bringing together existing initiatives, <clears throat> collaborate more fully together or to identify gaps where work needs to be done. RISA was involved last year in a source event called What Do We Not Know About Research Software Engineering? which asked participants to brainstorm some of the questions that we need to be able to answer as a community. These have been classified according to infrastructure, people and policy to give us an idea of the kinds of things that we might want to invest research in as a community to be able to answer. And these are just a fraction of the questions that were generated, uh, but were some of those that were highly prioritized. To conclude, how can you help? I hope today has inspired you uh, to see the benefits of engaging in making your own research fairer or encouraging at that work by others uh, that you may wish to work with your team or your community uh, to be involved in fair initiatives or to run your own. So you can get involved by subscribing to the RISA email list to stay up to date on upcoming community consultations, uh, publications or guidelines that you may want to use in your work. You can join the FAIR for Research Software Working Group to engage, some, engage, engage in some of the more specific conversations that are happening at the moment to define the principles or will keep happening for the next year to create adoption guidelines and identify use cases. You can think about how to run your own events. I've given an example there of uh, where Nessie, the New Zealand science infrastructure, ran an event last month at their national conference, which was very, very similar to one run in Australia six months before, uh, where the local community were exposed to the fair for RS work. Uh, and then uh, a workshop ensued that enabled them to identify examples of best practice uh, in this area where they, that they could leverage on going forward. Because of course it's important to understand that there are many different uh, aspects of FAIR, that many people engage in FAIR practices perhaps without using that term. There are many different initiatives, projects, workshops, publications that address aspects of FAIR uh, even if they're not using that terminology. And lastly to engage in FAIR events and of course some of the events coming in the rest of today and tomorrow here at CW21 uh, provide an opportunity to do that uh, and also to engage in other events here at CW21 that will support the fair work. So thank you for your time. I look forward to engaging with some of you in this work going forward.